it's very romantic. It's looking at the past and celebrating it and remembering it. It's the closest look you'll ever have to how people saw the world 500 or 600 years ago. It's a lot of lines, it's a lot of black, it's a lot of repetition, it's a little bit of organized chaos. There's an obsession to it. I definitely think the style works a lot better for me because of the craftsmanship. Some of the most simple things are the most beautiful. I've been drawing and producing art for over 30 years. I was a little bit scared that my choice in becoming a tattoo artist wasn't the right one. But a few clients came to me looking at my portfolio and said, you are really good with lines. Can you do this etching? I'm like, sure. So I focused on that specific style. I've always been interested by any type of art that's very intricate in a very simple way by using just one tone. And since I come from a small village in the south of France, I was never really exposed to what tattooing really is. I started seeing all this Renaissance, Victorian, Baroque art, and the etching was so intense. I just started trying to copy that. And I was just drawing this all the time. That was just my way. I went to school for printmaking and graduated in December of 2008, which is right when the economy crashed. I always had a passion for tattooing, so now that I was unemployed, living at my parents' house and with no hope of a job, I figured why not take the time to do something that I want to do for myself. Early on, I was very fortunate to have someone say, hey, instead of trying to do you know, all this other stuff, why don't you just make tattoos that look like your drawings? Etching was really my first true style in tattooing. I had like an uh, uncle in the military, grandfather, and they had like the classic old tattoos, and I always thought it was the coolest thing. And it just evolved and evolved more. Kind of developed my own etching style, and here I am, you know. Etchings are made from a tool carving into copper or metal, and typically that line it starts thick and it ends really thin. So I try to reproduce that with a needle, which is tricky. I sculpt the lines. Each line has a shape. If someone were to say, how would you explain your tattoos and they didn't know etchings, I would say, think of it as a contour line. Think of it as a line that defines a shape. More of those lines mean that it's darker, and less of those lines means that it's lighter. The peak of etching was really in the 15th, 16th century, in the beginning of the printing age. So back then, prints would only be made in a single tone because you had to use a wood block and just stamp an image on a paper. They had to find a way to really create shape and create detailed shading to create almost photorealistic images that were anatomical or botanical encyclopedias, religious images, whatever it was that they wanted to share in large numbers. Etching and engraving wasn't seen as an art form on its own. It was like a stand-in. It wasn't until people like Rembrandt and Goya who started to create etchings purely as the artwork it is today. The major challenges for me with etching tattoos are really that, first of all, I want to make it look vintage. I want it to have a feel like it was drawn in the 15th, 16th century. And there are some images that are really hard to reproduce like that, say like a whale. People didn't draw whales back then. They drew their thoughts that they had of a whale. But today, like, I know what a whale looks like. I have a lot of reference images I can use, and I have to translate this into something that really looks vintage. Often I'll spend hours on the design just trying to give it that vintage feel. I'm always going to be in love with just classic tattoo imagery, you know, roses, daggers, eagles, and switching that into an etching style tattoo is a challenge at some time, but I like a challenge. You have to be very comfortable and confident in your own line. If you are going to be shaky, it will show. If you want lines consistently next to each other, you have to know that you can put one after the other after the other. I have always been an obsessive line maker. That's been a problem of mine in college. You know, people always say, like, you can't do that. You have to loosen up. So that's my biggest problem to get over is I got to loosen up. But in that, it's created some good etching tattoos. I'll try to do different line weights. The longer ones will be a little bit bolder. It's more of like the frame of it. And then the smaller little lines work as you're shading. Each little line counts and they have to really follow each other in the right direction. 
It's about being able to add more and more and more lines within a drawing to make it more and more intricate without ever making a mistake. I like to share with others the art form and I've noticed that my pieces are accepted. People understand them now. They're looking at my piece and say, oh, this is art, okay. Art is very hard to pin down a reason of why we make it other than that we just have to as humans. There's such a magic language that's created when you're using strictly black line. How can you get all that detail? How can you get all that tone and that shape? It's kind of like a magic trick. I'm very lucky where I am now and if it just keeps up like this, then I'll be happy. For me, it's way more powerful than any canvas could be. You're decorating a living person and that art can travel the whole world. That's one of the greatest things about it to me. I think the site is definitely going to be evolving. There's really a lot of great artists out there. I have a lot to learn, trying to develop the subject, really develop my knowledge of it, continue looking at etchings, trying to understand how they created those crazy images through it, try to apply it to tattooing. I feel like we're really entering kind of a new age of etching tattooing, yeah, and I hope it's something that doesn't get lost in the future.